it is weird that she has cameras installed in therapy rooms through which she keeps an eye on Tom without his knowledge. <laughs> Her imaginary friend comes to life, but he kills everyone who bullies her. Ooh, spooky. See, I, I seen this popped up on my recommended, so we're gonna see what's up, man. Episode opens with Tom and Jill, good, a newlywed couple, celebrating their new life in Tom's childhood home. A gift from Tom's mother over a couple of drinks and sushi. Okay. They are laughing and enjoying themselves when they hear a knock from the basement, and they go to check what caused it. The basement is full of boxes containing Tom's childhood memories with Jill, as they have known each other since childhood. Oh, that's sweet childhood sweethearts. Out, you know, at the crib, a little dinner, a little chilling, a little wine, you know what it lead to, stop playing. Suddenly, a little dog appears from behind the closet and dashes upstairs, surprising them. Tom and Jill chase the dog, baffled and clueless as to where it came from and whether to keep it. Later that evening, Tom invites his friend Jason and his girlfriend to their place for dinner, where they discuss memories from the past, and also Jill's old drawings of a character she named Pretzel Jack that they found Pretzel in the basement. The Jill fuck? elaborates that she had visited a circus and seen a contortionist, and, inspired by him, she made her own contortionist clown character, which she would draw in the stories she wrote. The next day, the couple goes to the store to get supplies when Jill notices Tom talking to a woman, Sarah. Uh -oh. And when they return home, Jill confronts Tom about the woman. Ooh, and boy, I know that look. <laughs> if you know, you know. I seen that look. I know what that look mean. You must got me f***ed up. Ooh, boy. Asks if he has had an intimate relationship with her. Tom, who introduces Sarah as a client, is baffled at the accusation mm. and reminds her that he is not her father, who abandoned her after cheating on her mom. Mm. Later, That's crazy, though. That's crazy. That's kind of tough to be bringing up. You know what I'm saying? You in an argument. I'm not your daddy, nigga. <laughs> That's kind of cra crazy, though. Reconcile after apologizing for what they said to each other. Sheesh, it is then the makeup. that a mysterious door appears in the basement, and the couple is freaked out by this inexplicable appearance. To settle their nerves, Tom calls a friend, Jason, who tries to open the door forcefully. But when fuck? nothing works, he brings out his shotgun and fires multiple shots. Bro, yeah, if it if it take that much to open the door, bro, leave it alone. Cause it ain't meant for you to go through that bitch if it's that difficult. To Tom they finna be horror. it's over with. He only stops when the power goes out, but it does the trick and the door opens. Oh no. Inside there is a stairway that leads to another door that fuck? has a handprint on it. Jason is forbidden from using his gun again, and the three decide to ask their neighbor if they could see his basement, as they suspect what that he the might fuck? have created the passage to sneak into their house, <laughs> but can't find anything suspicious in the neighbor's He basement. looked creepy. I ain't gonna lie to you. He looked like he got something to do with it. I ain't gonna lie to you. He knew it was back there. He talking about some, nah, we ain't got one back here. Nah, you, you and know, after tripping. apologizing, they leave. Over the next few days, they try everything to open the door and even call help but nothing can open that door. One day, alone in the house, Jill goes to the basement after hearing some noise. She reaches the second door and, on a whim, places her hand on the hand imprint, which, surprisingly, opens the door. What the fuck? She looks around and sees a terrifying clown oh, that whips around and bends unnaturally before oh, running no. past her. Jill immediately calls the police and tells them that the intruder was already inside the house, but at that moment, they can't do anything more than keep an eye on the house for the night. What Jill the has been fuck? in therapy to deal with her disorder. Ain't no way. I'm going to my fucking basement. <laughs> Unlock the door with my handprint. I've been trying to yank this door open, trying to pry this bitch open. I use my handprint. It open, and it's a, a crazy motherfucking clown looking nigga in that bitch just sitting in the corner fuck no hell no trust of men because of the trauma she underwent in her childhood and now tom's meeting with a mystery woman makes jill more suspicious of him so she decides to place her trust on another man jason where she asks for Can't help to figure out what is going on in tom's life and visits him but their conversation soon changes into an argument when Jason blames Jill for letting her past shadow cast on her current relationship. Mm. Jill defends herself, but Jason doesn't stop there and gaslights Jill till the scary clown comes from the shadows oh, no. and starts stabbing Jason till Ooh, Jill screams for him to stop. Mm. The murder soon comes to light and the investigation- So, so I, I'm assuming the, the imaginary friend 
manifest when she gets angry and upset and the emotion starts to rise. Correct! Officers question a shell-shocked Jill at her home as she is prime suspect in Jason's murder. <laughs> but something the officer said strikes Jill. And that night, she goes to the basement to look at the drawing pad that has many drawings of Pretzel Jack. She can't unsee the uncanny resemblance between the character she created and the clown that fatally attacked Jason. Since then, she has been having flashbacks from her childhood about a mysterious door that was in the house she lived well, in what the or fuck? not, she can't remember. So to put a rest to these recurring thoughts, she visits her childhood house and the new owner graciously welcomes her. While inside the house, Jill manages to sneak into her room, but she can't find the door she saw in her flashbacks. So mm. to cross-check if she missed it somehow, she sneaks inside the house once the owner has gone out to walk her cat. Did she got the cat on the leash? People go walk their cats? <laughs> Where am I tripping? Something wrong with me? Because I don't walk my cat. I ain't never heard Ain't That's new to me. Jill walks into her old room and tears down the wallpaper that covers uh -oh. where she saw the door. And as she suspected, she find that there is a door that is smaller than the one in her current house. She opens the door to find something peculiar what inside that? that resembles a human a figure, but is too distorted to make out clearly. Oh, no. Jill is now convinced that Pretzel Jack has somehow come to life. And when she sees a glimpse of him in her bedroom, she screams for help. But when Tom checks and finds no one, he questions her sanity. Similarly, Damn. her therapist doesn't show any interest in what she's saying and, much to her chagrin, recommends her medicines, making her leave the session midway. When nobody believes her, Jill turns to yet another man, her neighbor, Ian, who listens to her without judgment. Jill feels she can freely talk to him, so she confides in Ian about Pretzel Jack and okay. how she believes she created the entity that killed Jason. Ian seems to understand her and presents his notion of the contortionist, describing him as her protector and correlates his action to Jill getting angry at the people. He also confides in Jill and tells her that when he was a kid, he also drew himself a friend, a very tall- Did he, did he manifest and start killing niggas? That's what I want to know. <laughs> did he start manifesting killing niggas? If you imagine this imaginary friend, did he start up? I'm trying to see what's up. Character aptly named the tall boy on the other the hand tall Tom boy. has secrets of his own as he secretively gives sarah's baby a toy at the park and okay. there's this mysterious woman with whom he occasionally meets and talks about sarah and how much the baby looks like him indicating Sheesh. that he might have fathered a child with her these oh. Oh. what you telling me you might have you might have got her pregnant? That's why she's suspicious. She has the right to be suspicious. <laughs> Yo, niggas ain't shit, boy. I swear to God. Lord Jesus. Yo, she has all the right in the world, brother, to be suspicious. I'm on his side at first. I'm like, yeah, bro, like it's cool. Maybe she went through some shit and trauma and this and that. He like, yeah, I'm not your daddy, bitch. <laughs> You, 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 you on my ass. I'm not your daddy, ho. Like, bro, you, you could have, you smashed Miss Sarah. Look like your client. You smashed Miss Sarah. And that might be your baby. And you giving this, this kid toys on the low. Like, come on, bro. Come on, brother. He ain't, he can't be black, Mars. He can't be black. He's, he, he might be, I don't know. He might be something else. The baby looks like him, indicating that he might have fathered a child with her. These meetings are strange and unconventional therapy sessions take place in which the woman provides Tom with a Sheesh. sensory deprivation pool to take his mind off the recent events and all other things happening in his life. But it is weird that she has cameras installed in therapy rooms through which she keeps an eye on Tom without his knowledge. <laughs> She finna go crazy. No, this shit got, this shit took a turn. This shit took a turn real fast. Now the therapist got something for him. So all the hoes chasing him. That's what it looked like to me. I mean, goddamn, like, let the brother, like, damn, let the brother breathe. <laughs> goddamn. Installed in therapy rooms through which she keeps an eye on Tom without his knowledge. Meanwhile, Jill has just reached home after she met with Ian when Tom gets a call on his laptop. 
Jill decides to take it since he's not home and is shocked to hear a child crying from the background and Sarah warning Tom not to come anywhere near her family again or she will call the cops on him. Oh my God. The furious Jill cannot believe her suspicions are coming true. All this while when she Damn. was made to feel she is in the wrong. Back at the anonymous woman's maze-like house, Pretzel Jack appears at- Damn it, Pretzel Jack. God damn it. Pretzel Jack didn't got the info. He didn't got the low on this lady. And Pretzel Jack finna stab the fuck out this woman. After Jill fails to control her anger and badly injures the woman who tries to shoot him, but to no avail. He Get out. makes his way to Tom, attacking him with a knife and Ooh. trying to drown him. Tom fights back Come on, Tom. stabbed in his chest while tackling the contortionist. The badly injured woman has Ooh. some strength left and she fires at Pretzel Jack allowing Tom to run. But the shot doesn't do much damage and Pretzel Jack twists his body to appear like a spider, puts what himself back fuck? on his feet and follows Tom. In the meantime, on, Tom. Tom gets himself Get the... in the woman's car. Oh, this nigga in the stick shift. How to drive a stick. <laughs> <laughs> what luck? What luck? This nigga don't know how to drive a stick. <laughs> Lord Jesus. What luck, Tom? God damn, Tom. Yes, <laughs> He accidentally puts the car in reverse and gets ran by a van once he reaches Damn. the main road. Pretzel, Pretzel Jack sees Jack the accident and decides to leave for now. Jill soon receives a call from the hospital about Tom and gets ready to leave when she hears some noise from downstairs and finds the front door open. She gets scared when all of a sudden... Yeah, look, if you ever in a relationship with a woman like this that can manifest a imaginary friend to murder you brother you better be on your best behavior brother you're a bet you better not do nothing you better not argue she want to argue she's like hey yep yeah, you got it you're right I'm looking at this <laughs> you gonna be a dead dog, man explaining the dog had run out she's relieved and asks him to stay with her till she heads to the hospital and ian don't do it bro drive her at the hospital, Tom is not happy to see Ian with Jill, and sensing the awkwardness, uh -oh. Jill asks Ian to leave. The couple is then visited by the police, who show them the footage they recovered of the clown attacking Tom in the pool. They have also oh, other people. Okay, okay, okay. So everybody can see the imaginary friend. I thought maybe certain people could see it. The people that were getting attacked, and the person that manifesting the. You know what I'm saying? Manifesting the imaginary friend so everybody can see that motherfucker. Okay, okay. Identify the mysterious woman who turns out to be a doula, and they are curious to know how Tom knew her since she never advertised her therapy sessions anywhere. Police question him about Sarah. Tom doesn't disclose much. However, Tom is reminded of Jill's drawings of the clown contortionist and believes that a psychopath must have seen the drawings and made a mask to look like the character. That's he crazy. soon gets discharged from the hospital, and when they reach home, Tom asks Jill if she knows this person who is trying to harm them. Jill calmly states that he's me, and takes Tom to the door to show him the carcass of Pretzel Jack she picked up what when she fuck? last visited her old house. It resembles a hollow scalded mannequin, and after Jill moved out from her old house, Pretzel Jack too ceased to exist. She further explains that he has come back to protect her from getting hurt. Mm. It is difficult for Tom to wrap his head around Jill's story and questions her why Pretzel Jack tried to hurt him. What the Jill fuck? tells him she heard the baby when she answered. That nigga look like uh, Dr. Seuss, don't he? Damn, didn't he look like Dr. Seuss cat? <laughs> he looked like that. And asks him to tell the truth. Tom finally confesses that he was involved with an already married Sarah. But he ended it after he got together with Jill. <laughs> Though he came to know later that Sarah was pregnant and was sure the kid was his, yeah. but Facts. Sarah didn't want her husband to know, so she threatened Tom to stay away. Jill is beyond furious at such a betrayal, and her mood alerts Pretzel Jack. Yeah, that nigga looks crazy. Uh oh, she getting a little too angry, lady. You need to relax, okay? Because Pretzel Jack is gonna go on a rampage. Lord Jesus. All right, let's not, let's not, let's not do that who was sleeping under somebody's oh, no. patio, and he soon puts his limbs So this nigga just spot look, this nigga just spawns somewhere as soon as she get angry or as <laughs> Yo, that's, that's 
<laughs> That's terrifying. Place before stopping to Jill's house. It's By the terrifying. Time he reaches the house, he sees Jill and Tom leaving their this car. Could just spawn. The couple has decided to visit Jill's psychiatrist for a couple session to save their marriage, but it uh -oh. backfires because both men dismiss Jill and her story about her imaginary friend, enraging Jill. She tells them that Pretzel Jack is coming as the light flickers, mm. but the doctor is confident nothing will happen until Pretzel Jack crawls inside oh, through no. the window and kills the doctor in front of Jill and Tom. Oh. The couple dash out of the building and hop into Ian's truck, who is surprisingly waiting for them at the entrance. Well, no, that's kind of weird. What's up with Ian? He's just, he's just at the right place at the right time every time. I don't know about Ian, guys. I don't know. We should watch Ian. Pretzel Jack chases them for quite some time before they lose him, and Tom looks at Jill in utter disbelief. They all go to Ian's home, and she asks for a method to destroy him, to which Ian paints a gruesome picture of destroying every part of Pretzel Jack to get rid of him, but also shares a different approach, which is to live with it and control it. Now that they know Pretzel That's Jack is real and Jill's creation, Ian suggests they lure him out to trap him and then learn to control him. But for that, she will have to go through emotional turmoil. They sit in the empty room behind the dream door, and as Jill's feelings and emotions get skinned, Pretzel Jack's pace increases uh -oh. as he makes his way to their- Ooh, boy, what the hell? Look, you just out there cutting your grass on a, on a, on a beautiful Saturday morning. This motherfucker look like cat in a hat walking through your neighborhood ready to kill something. What you doing? You calling the police or you running inside the house and act like you ain't seen nothing? You're a victim. Mm. House. Tom walks outside the room but stops when he sees Pretzel Jack at the edge of the stairs. Just then, Jill's phone rings and she picks it up to find it is her dad. Pretzel Jack suddenly charges towards Tom but runs past him into the room where he sees Jill who is now calm and performs some moves to impress her. Jill what smiles fuck? as she looks at Pretzel Jack and he takes her in an embrace, making her feel safe and happy. At that moment, Sarah's Yeah, voice Tom, brother, this is the perfect time to skedaddle, okay? It's a, it's a long stairway behind you. You better get to stepping, all right? All right, this is the perfect time to skedaddle because I think she's having a little too much fun with Mr. Uh, Mr. Jack here, all right? can be heard from upstairs calling out to Tom. Tom quickly makes his way up and opens the door for her. I bet he Jill did. I would have quickly made upstairs, my way up too. when Jill sees Sarah outside with Tom arguing, she loses her cool and tight. No, Sarah! Facing Pretzel Jack to go after Tom and Sarah. Sarah gets stabbed in her Oof. leg before Tom flees with her and Jill and Ian they tail stab, them. They stab While Sarah. to save themselves, Sarah and Tom also try to sort things out Sheesh. and Tom finds out that the child is not his after Sarah got the DNA. Yo, that is kind of crazy. Pete, Tom and Sarah. Boondocks, Tom and Sarah, that's kind of that's kind of crazy, ain't it? Ain't that kind of crazy to y'all? Tests done. So to tell him that, she came to his house that evening. They enter a gymnasium, and Tom hides an Jasmine injured at. Sarah in a room. Uh, see, they remixed that, Mars. Instead of Jasmine, they got a, a, a Jordan. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a kid. Tom got a kid. He mixed. While he tries to lure away Pretzel Jack. Soon, a chase ensues, and they end up in the swimming pool area where Pretzel Jack oh, tries to drown Tom yet again. Ian and Jill also reach there, and Jill panics, seeing her husband in danger because of her imaginary friend. However, Ian tries to calm her Sheesh. down and asks her to concentrate on him so he can guide her to control Pretzel Jack. Once she gets control of Pretzel Jack, she frees Tom first, and hey. then Ian helps her crush her creation using her mind. And that ends up with Pretzel Jack exploding into white dust what underwater. The fuck? Simultaneously, Jill and Ian fall to the floor, and Jeez. Jill's ear bleeds. Oof. They take Sarah what to the, the hospital, where the situation gets awkward as no one talks <clears throat> to the other. So Sarah asks to have a moment alone with Jill and tells her that Tom doesn't have an illegitimate child with her, oh. putting an end to Jill's suspicion. Hey! <laughs> Let's go. My boy Tom beat the case. He beat the case. All the all the odds were stacked against him. He beat the case. My boy Tom. Let's go. Yet she doesn't feel at ease because Tom lied. 
Outside the room, Tom and Ian stand waiting, but Tom doesn't trust Ian and wanders off to avoid being in his company, but ends up meeting the detectives. Meanwhile, Jill asks Ian to give her a ride, but tells him she doesn't want to go home and wishes to learn to control her mind. Ian takes her to his family's summer home, and a feeling of deja vu suddenly engulfs Jill as she enters the house. Ian prepares the bed for her, and once she's asleep, he goes through her phone, where her dad has left dozens of messages and calls asking her to meet him. After being grilled by the detectives at the hospital, Tom returns home, tired. He calls for Jill, but when no one answers, he reaches out for his phone and finds a message from Jill's dad, Bill, who sounds panicked and asks Tom to tell Jill to meet him as soon as possible as uh -oh. he has something very important to share about his family. The scene then shifts to a motel where Bill is drinking. When he hears a knock at his door, he rushes to find it is Ian, Ian? who addresses him as dad, indicating Jill is his half-sister. What? I knew something was up with Ian. I didn't know what. Because he just knew too much. It seemed like he knew everything and then he was at the right place at the right time all the time. So this nigga is half siblings with uh, Jill. Crazy. Ian despises his dad and mm. conjures tall boy who gouges Bill's eyes. And tall boy is real, nigga. You're a victim. Mm. And tall boy look like, I don't know, that nigga look like Dracula, nigga. A 6'7 six, a, a six, Dracula, nigga. Him instantly. Moments Ooh. later, Tom reaches the address Bill had mentioned in his voicemail. Tom, don't go there. And sees Ian leaving the same motel. Tom goes into the motel looking for Bill, but the room Bill had mentioned is empty, as if he was never there. Sheesh. The next day, Ian starts training Jill and reveals what he created her dog, which astonishes her. After finding her phone smashed, she can't shake an inexplicable feeling and steps out of the house for some fresh air. Yeah, he really killed their daddy. Like, damn, like, what the fuck? That's crazy. To her, tall boy is keeping a vigil on her. Once back inside, she hears rustling from within a closet. She opens it to find a stuffed dog toy that looks exactly like she had when she was a little girl. Fear grips like the her real dog. immediately as she realizes something is very wrong. But she composes herself before Ian and says she needs to go home. Back at the house, Tom spots his dog's twin that takes him into Ian's home, and after finding no one's home, Tom snoops in to find Jill's pictures and proof that reveals Ian is uh -oh. Jill's half-brother. Ian and Jill return home Sheesh. and find Tom inside the house with all the pictures, and he confronts Ian about it. Jill suddenly remembers why the house looked familiar because it was the same house where her dad had taken her and her mother a few times and she had left her stuffed dog there. She puts the pieces together and is furious that he lied to her, but Ian wants her to understand he did everything for her and takes them to show Bill's corpse in his garage, but it is- Whoa. Now you kinda, that's kinda crazy, bro. You're, you're on this psychopath shit, brother. You gonna take her to see his corpse? Like, come on now. chewed by hungry dogs that are Ian's creation. Horrified by what she has just witnessed, Jill steps back and yells at Ian to stay away from her and calls the cops. The cops and the detectives soon arrive and Damn. Ian confesses to killing his dad and also takes the blame for Jason's killing. He further states that he needed the condo he lives in to be near Jill. So what? he put the house owners to rest. He is arrested and taken away by two detectives. And as that he is being creep. transported, they get stuck behind a school bus and wait for it to move. That nigga tall boy finna pull up. Big Dracula 6'8". <laughs> he finna kill all you niggas. You think it's a game, nigga? Just as they are waiting, tall boy comes Stop from behind playing. holding drilling machines and brutally kills the detectives. Jill wow. and Tom reconcile after the time apart and realize how much they love each other. Tom steps out of the house to see Ian standing on his porch, covered No, in don't tell me Ian's finna kill Tom. Please don't kill my boy Tom. He, Lord Jesus. He just beat the case. Blood. Tom calls a cop who is at the neighboring crime scene, but to his horror, Ian makes tall boy Ooh. slay the cop. Tom tries to run inside, but Ian has already conjured a door behind Tom, oh, through no. which a red hooded entity stares back at Brother, Tom. You got to Jill go. calls out to Tom, but he doesn't answer, so she goes out and finds the body of the cop and a message for her. 
asking her to meet at the ghost neighborhood written by his blood. Oof. In the ghost neighborhood, Tom is seen being dragged by the tall boy into a building under construction, and he stops. Yeah, we need. Ian. Yeah, we're gonna have to get a pretzel, pretzel Jack and tall boy fight. <laughs> somebody, like somebody, gotta throw the hands. I'm sorry. Who has just finished eating to keep up his strength? He confesses that he loves Jill in a pure, uncomplicated way, and sees them being connected by the abilities they possess. Much to Tom's disgust. But Tom doesn't stay longer to hear his nonsense and makes a run for it as soon as he gets a chance and finds him being pursued by the tall boy. <laughs> Tom said, fuck it, I'm finna jump out this window, nigga. Fuck is you talk about? Meanwhile, Jill arrives at the ghost neighborhood in search of Ian. Unbeknownst to her, the hooded entities are following her and when the security guard tries to stop her, those entities attack the security guard, oh stabbing God. him to death. Jill gets appalled and runs to hide from them, and Tallboy revving his drill nearby. She soon finds Tom, but after he forces himself onto her, she realizes it is not Tom, but Ian's creation with a psyche. <gasps> the finesse! <laughs> this nigga Ian created an imaginary Tom. <laughs> but hey, this nigga Ian is 20 steps ahead. <laughs> can feel Jill. Upon Sheesh. realizing this, she flees, and Tom's doppelganger chases her till she impales him with a piece of fence. Ooh. Just as the fake Tom breathes his last, the real Tom comes, and to prove that he is real, he cuts himself with a nail, showing Jill his crimson blood. Damn. Jill finally breathes a sigh of relief and hugs Tom. It is the following day, and they step out in the open and soon get chased by Tallboy. They hide in a house where Jill concentrates on conjuring Come Pretzel on. Jack Come while on. Tom distracts Tallboy. Just as Tallboy is about Ooh, to attack her, Pretzel Jack appears hey. in an epic showdown between the imaginary. Who y'all got? <laughs> Who y'all got? Tallboy or Pretzel motherfucking Jack, nigga? <laughs> Who y'all got? Who y'all got? PJ. One for PJ. I see PJ in the chat. Got another J. 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 Okay, we got three J's. Sheesh. She J winning. J Fo J. God damn. J J J for the win. God damn. Okay. Let's see what we got. Friends of the part siblings. Dracula look, look crazy. In no time, Pretzel Jack snatches Tall Boy's drill and cuts his head in half, eliminating him. Damn. To put an end to their ordeal, <laughs> Jill suggests they finish Ian. Ian knows what's coming next. Yeah, you gonna have to kill so him. He runs and uses the last bits of his energy to revive Tall Boy. He continues running and the trio tails him into another abandoned home. Jill finds Ian in a room with dozens of different colored rooms. That's kind of cool. Ian is not ready to give up on Jill and starts tackling her, which is witnessed by Pretzel uh -oh. Jack. But before he can rescue Jill, he is attacked by the now revived tall boy no! who splits Pretzel Jack's body in half. Soon You're after, Tom reaches mm. there, and the couple stabs Ian in his heart. Damn. The tall boy runs towards them to stop them from hurting his He gonna creator, disappear, though. But he accidentally he? pierces Ian's body with his drill Ooh. as Jill and Tom jump out of the way. Ian suffers a lot before he dies, making tall boy and all the doors vanish. Sometime later, we see Jill and Tom are parents to a beautiful baby Aww. who has inherited Jill's ability and can conjure entities uh -oh. who can become killers anytime. That's kind of scary, your child being able to fucking do that shit. Hey, this was dope. I fucked with this.